Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Dragon Ball Super Volume 10 from Manga Entertainment and this is the last part of the, the Dragon Ball Super Saga. Why was I going to say Z Super? Um, I've been saying it for a while. But this is the last part in Dragon Ball Super as we know of bar the Broly film. But before we talk about it, if you want to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button as well as that cheeky notification bell to be notified when more videos drop. We're going to jump straight into this. So yeah, let's just jump straight in. We kind of know what's going on. There's a lot going on in the saga already. We've stopped at a crucial point, but now we're going to continue. So I'm going to talk about the favorite parts that I generally really liked. Um, because there's so so much in this. I reckon that when they were doing this uh, and there's not that many characters left they were able to have a little bit more fun with this and you can see it within certain things. You have the last three people of Universe 2 where the three characters I don't know what the names are if you know let me know down below in the comments um, because there's so many characters to kind of like try and remember the names of but because of this they now have the powers of Ribrian and are kind of like her little like group things um so it's kind of interesting to see the characters actually take on the same powers as well as the same outfits as them so with android 17 and 18 there is kind of a like they they role play they kind of get into the superhero thing so when you've got the three characters going like we'll do this for love and justice blah 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 then you have 17 and 18 kind of jump in and they're saying like i am 17 i am the person that has a cold heart and 18 does that kind of the same and i kind of didn't expect to see this a lot i thought we would see a little bit um like they'd be like oh i'm not really bothered but it was generally kind of funny to kind of see in this one now we have two namekians um, and I've got to admit, when seeing this, they're from Khalifa and Hit's universe, I generally kind of liked it, only because they fused with every Namekian on their planet Namek, uh, they gained all the powers, and the reason why they weren't fighting much within the, like, this tournament is because they were trying to get let their power settle, they were trying to get the mind working, because you have all these voices going off in your head all the time, this would have been the best time to kind of wait. So now that the power sat down, you know, it, it's regulated, the minds are on one focused area, they can actually fight, which I generally really like because it showed that they were dealing with thousands or hundreds of whatever, of Namekians just literally talking, but they all focused and you see this all the way through from fighting to using special attacks to gaining their powers like if their arms get like cut off to actually regain it i love this and i like the story behind it one of the kind of nicer moments that you have on this is when piccolo is being attacked and he hit, i think a massive energy beam is just about to hit him what happens is gohan like kind of like jumps in and actually texts piccolo and you kind of remember what happened in z where you Nappa, I think it was just about to attack Gohan, but Piccolo jumped in and saved him. I kind of like Gohan repaying him and being there as a friend and a like a son type figure. I liked it. It was a very wholesome moment and it just makes you go, oh. One of the big moments is Universe 2 uses their love power. But they've gained love all from everyone, from their universe, from like people watching to the people sitting in the stands. And they create this like black, love black hole. And they hit uh, Goku 18 and 17. And it starts pushing them down. And it's so weighted that the gravity is so intense. But where Goku is like, well, you know, I can see that they go for love. That's their passion. But my power comes from, um, I think it's uh, Fury. And he powers up to Super Saiyan Blue. He powers up and he shoots a Kamehameha. And at the same point, Gohan's doing the same. He shoots out a Kamehameha towards the two Namekians. And you know, it's the music that starts hyping up. It's everything that kind of kicks in. And you're like, oh wow, this is this is in this is intense. Uh, it gets to the point where like the Namekians, like when Gohan's firing the Kamehameha, like one just jumps into the stream and comes out, grabs his hand, and it looks like he's gonna move it off to one side. But in the end, it doesn't like Piccolo fires his special beam cannon, knocks the Namekians out. And with uh, the other universe, Universe 2, they get knocked out because Goku just knocks them out with a Kamehameha and it's so powerful. And it's just that moment where it's like both father and son are actually firing the beams like, directly past each other. But it hits and it makes contact and it knocks them out. Now, 
kind of, this comes up to like an emotional part where Universe 2 says goodbye and they're saying like, you know, thank you very much for the support. Gets a little bit of time and then they're wiped out. But I think one of the most emotional parts of this is where Champa is saying goodbye to Beerus. You know, everyone's saying like goodbye, you know, thank you very much for teaching me. Like say Carbis says that to Vegeta. Where Khalifla is running after the two Namekians saying that she's going to kick their asses because, you know, that's a promise she made. But Champa, like... I really don't like Champa, but this moment where he realizes looking back at his universe that that's it, and he looks at Beerus, and for that split second when they look at each other, you know there is so much emotion going from one to the other. And then just when Champa just goes, nah, and pulls his thing down, like you know that that was his way of saying thank you, brother, or you know, goodbye. And just even thinking about that moment, it, it gets me emotional. And how just all this entire tournament, that is one thing that I focused on. And I was just like, wow. And in Beerus, rather than in his way of like saying goodbye or anything like that, just says, is that it? You know, or something like that. I generally would have loved like one single tear, like even a small one, just drops down. That to me would have been, that would have been the icing on the cake for that moment. It's such a powerful scene. And I think it's because you have so much connection, like with Ribrian and her universe, it's nice that they did that. But to me, I wasn't kind of invested. It was just an emotional, but Beerus and Champa, oh, it totally blew me away on that one. Oh, just, just no, I, oh, the feels, the feels. There are fights that carry on and you don't kind of feel, oh, you kind of now want the end of the tournament. You want it just to kind of end. And I think they do kind of drag this out, maybe to make up to the rest of like how many episodes they want. So Vegeta's fighting some guy who's got like some sort of power belt that makes him more powerful and his suit. Um, and the fights carry on. And there's some more kind of tricks. So I don't know the mouse's name. If you know, let me know down below in the comments. And he kind of really irritates me because they have an invisible guy and they have this insect and the, uh, the chameleon gets knocked out quite quickly because they do it. But then they've got this little insect. And one thing is that Piccolo picks up his energy, doesn't hit him, but then realizes that he sees it, but doesn't kind of move away from the edge, just gets knocked out. It's one of those things where it's like, right, why didn't you move away? But they could have had that little insect hide for such a long time, knock out as much people as it can, or just hide or get, like one or two insects to kind of win this tournament, that would have been interesting. I really like the thing when Android 17 kind of like figures out what to do and then Goku kind of teams up with him to hit the ground to kind of stop him from jumping. I really like that because it was very smart and the way that 17 uh, literally grabs the uh, bug and just throws him out, I thought that was kind of cool. The mouse being completely taken out of existence, he does say like, oh, I'm gonna take you all with me. And you kind of want that, but he does nothing. It's like, oh, I'm gonna take you all with me. Well, then do something, but he gets taken out really quickly. And obviously when they all come back, I just want the whole universe, I want that universe just to be wiped out because the mouse really irritates me. We come up to one of the like two remaining universes, which is this robot one. You have these robots and they just come and attack everyone really quickly and they get stronger and stronger, which makes me kind of think why they didn't get super strong at the very beginning. They form to make like this Megazord type thing. And then later on, uh, the kind of person that runs them uh, jumps in and kind of makes this giant big monster, which kind of reminded me of Harugagon from the um, Dragon Ball Z film, the last one. And it felt like this was this could have been done at the very beginning. So you have all the, like him fighting, he, they can't land proper punches. Kind of using his ability like a dolphin, like using like radar, which is fine, which is a really cool ability. Um, but then kind of knocks out 18, but then you see like 17, Frieza, Gohan, um, and Goku and Vegeta all come together and actually kind of defeat this monster and it was kind of cool It also kind of reminds me a lot of like maybe I think some of the Dragon Ball Heroes things that's been up So there were quite a few things that kind of reminded me of this part, but the main focus I've got it is like Toppo versus 17 and Freezer, where Toppo becomes a 
god of destruction and i kind of think that should have been disqualified only because you then got some super powered person that's able to like destroy things now you can't destroy the characters which i thought i was like why is he just des destroying them but then i realized ah if he does he's out of that game so it just felt like there were a lot of things like in this that overpowered that made this universe like from Juran's universe a lot stronger and that did kind of irritate me. There's tons more stuff. I generally think as soon as the other universes are taken and you've just got like Jiren, Topo uh, and like all the others, I feel like they could have a lot more fun. Uh, when I was talking about the God of Destruction, I generally think that that could have been taken out because uh, it just got to the point where he's like, really? It feels like their universe was just overpowered with so many people and that really did irritate me because it felt like Universe 7, like Goku and all that, wouldn't catch a break. And I know that obviously they power up and they obviously win, but it just felt like they could never get a break. And that, you know, you kind of think, oh, why? So with obviously Tobi would be God of Destruction. Um, I think that his power, he shouldn't have been able to use that power. Um, I think that would be much more of a fair fight, but I do love the fact that he got, uh, uh, Topo got under Frieza's skin, and that was interesting because Frieza just had been keeping his cool for a long time, but in this one hadn't. So that I generally kind of thought, that's actually fun. Moving to go, kind of Goku and Vegeta, Vegeta actually reaches the next level. This to me was perfect because it felt, it feels like Vegeta doesn't get that many power-ups, um, so when he reached his next like level, that was awesome. His eyes, his hair grew longer. But no, his hair made him know his eyes. But his eyes kind of like turned into gems, I think, that you know, like really bright blue. Um, I also like the fact that he learned how Jiren fought as well. So when Jiren was like throwing punches, like Vegeta was able to dodge properly and it wasn't just a, oh, you know, I, I've been hit. He was actually able to do some damage. And then when he does his like final flash and he ups his power and he just blasts Jiren and Jiren literally gets in there later, Vegeta's like, oh crap, and then gets massively wailed on. One thing I really, really liked about Vegeta was that when he had like no energy left, when he had nothing in the tank, he was able to keep going. You know, even if his punches weren't strong, you know, they did a little bit of impact, but he wouldn't give up. And that I absolutely loved about Vegeta. Vegeta can be a massive dick at times, but seeing that, I absolutely thought was great. From there, Vegeta gives the last remaining part of his energy to Goku, and you think, oh, but Vegeta knew that Goku was the only one to defeat Jiren. Completely, completely forgot about Dispo. So really quickly, Dispo uh, goes against Gohan and Frieza, and they do like quite a lot. Um, they fight, Frieza like makes this massive energy cell that actually kind of works, and then obviously Gohan takes uh, Dispo out. Completely forgot that, and it's just in my notes. But yeah, I, that was kind of interesting to see too. But you know, the main things with Topo and Jiren, they're the ones that you want to watch. Ultra Instinct, Mastered Ultra Instinct, or Mastered Automaton <laughs> Ultra Instinct, whatever you want to call it. I absolutely adored this. I love the fact that the gods and the Kais stood up because they finally saw the Mastered version. And you know, seeing Goku push through his limits to reach this, the fighting against Jiren was great. The one thing I, I did find interesting is because Jiren was so used to winning all the time, when Goku was like punching and winning and actually keeping his cool, Jiren was getting angry and you could see this. You know, obviously his like clothes ripped off, you know, his shirt. Uh, same thing is right with Goku. When Goku loses his shirt, that is it. He has reached the ultimate maximum point for that entire saga. So seeing this was great, you know, the whole thing where he was just fighting. But one thing I did think that I added to this was when Goku was about to do the final, final blow, the finishing blow, his body gives out and that's it. You know, the ultra instinct has just literally just ripped him apart and you see it. And I was like, oh my God, like, you know, it's not going to be a farewell punch. And then he wins and then he powers down and goes, <laughs> I did it guys, I did it. You know, it was literally, oh my God, how can this get any better? I think moving to the last part, and this is my favorite. This is the, the scene that gives me goosebumps. The scene that was shown all around the world was when Goku, Frieza and 17 team up to land that finishing blow. So Goku and Frieza just literally just grabs you and just like 
get him out of the ring. That to me was a part where it was like, oh my God, the animation, the, the music, everything hit right, everything. And I loved it. I think it's the best scene in all of Dragon Ball Super. I really like the wish that 17 brings all the universes back and that's good. And then scene 17 just wish everyone back and you just see everyone kind of in, enjoying themselves. And I really like the end credits where it's like, you know, the music kicks in, everyone's like having fun and everyone's back to normal. And then all of a sudden you've got Goku versus Vegeta again at the very end. Uh, and then Goku saying he can't go Ultra Instinct, uh, but Vegeta can still go his Super Saiyan 2 Blue or Blue 2, whichever one you want to call it. And here are my final thoughts. I think out of the history of Dragon Ball, as in Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball Super, this is the best story arc that we've had. It had everything that you could have wished for. It felt like they put everything into this everything in one go just to see what would happen and it did everything it had transformations it had limitations it had some amazing artwork and you can definitely see it i think it's the one where vegeta goes against durin like for one part it's normal but when they go to like the second part boom the animation just ramps up like completely it's colorful it's amazing and i don't know why it's not like that all the way through but just to see it i was like holy crap you know i loved the color the style the animation everything was perfect i also had so many transformations like goku turning from super saiyan to super saiyan blue to super saiyan god and there was tons of them. There other characters transforming as well. You had characters that I absolutely hated and wish to never see again or even be mentioned. You had introduction to new characters, to new Saiyans, and you know, it felt like if they stopped the Goku story, you have so many other stories that you could tell. You could focus on Khalifla, to Kale, to Kaba, or you could go to the uh, to the Pride Troopers. You could get rid of Ribrian because no one likes her. You know, it's all these things that you could do that brought more to this than anything that I've ever seen. The story arcs, will Khalifa become Super Saiyan 3? This also got you pumped for the Broly uh, film when that came out because it was directly after and it was tied in. Oh my God, like then I was like, I need to see it. I love that style of animation. So please Super, if you're coming back, stick with that animation because that was perfect. If you're collecting the Dragon Ball Super Set, you need to add this to your collection. Even if you're picking this up and thought, oh, I'll jump halfway through, this is one I highly recommend. This is just absolutely perfect. I highly recommend this. I can't recommend it more than enough, is that the way? But this is just perfect. This is everything that I wanted Dragon Ball Super to be. This is everything I want it to continue onto into the next series. I am just so pumped for, uh, for Dragon Ball Super and it is just amazing. I am gonna leave it there. What are your thoughts on this? Did you like Super? Did you not? Are you excited for the next series when it comes out? What was your favorite part in the Tournament of Power? Let me know down below in the comments because I really want to know. And let's start talking about Dragon Ball Super. So I am going to leave it there. If you've enjoyed this sort of content and you want to see more, then hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, as well as that cheeky notification bell to be notified when more videos drop. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed Dragon Ball Super. Yeah, so I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.